unboxing and review of the Glarry GT105 acoustic guitar. This guitar was sent to me by Glarry Instruments so I could do a review of it. However, I'll still be completely honest and if I think the guitar's rubbish, I'll say so. Right, let's get on with the unboxing. But before I do, I'll point out the damage to the box and there's a lot of it. There's multiple punctures right the way through the box and the thin end of the box where the neck is has been completely concertinaed in both back and front. So I just hope the guitar's not damaged inside. Right, I'll open the box so we can take a look. To get into the box, I just had to cut through two very thick pieces of sellotape. One at the thin end of the box and one at the thick end of the box. And then I could just turn the box over and remove the lid. So far, so good. Even though the box was quite heavily damaged, the guitar inside looks perfectly sound. It's inside a polystyrene padded bag and that from the outside seems to have protected the guitar. You can really see from the inside of the box just how much damage the box received during transit. Right, let's take the guitar out of the box and have a look at the back. And that too, surprisingly, seems absolutely fine. The end of the polystyrene bag is secured by a rubber band. However, there's a little bag in that rubber band. Let's have a look what that is. What we've got in the small plastic bag is an Allen key. And this is for adjusting the truss rod. Hopefully, I can show you that later in the video. Right, let's remove the rubber band and then we can take the guitar out and have a good look at it. The first thing you notice is that wonderful smell of new guitar. It's kind of like new car, but new guitar. And it smells kind of like fresh wood and fresh varnish. It's a great smell, love it. Uh, the guitar is a matte finish which isn't my favourite, but these days both the satin and the matte finish are very popular amongst guitar makers and even the most expensive guitars are coming in these finishes. Before I go into any depth in this review, it's worth me pointing out that this is probably the cheapest guitar on the internet. It is really cheap, so how they managed to make a guitar for that in the first place, I don't know. From the UK Glarry Instruments website, you can buy this guitar for £42, which I think is amazing. Right, I'll take the brown paper off the guitar and then I can have a proper look at it. So you can have a better look at the guitar, I've taken it outside and taken some arty photos of it. This is because the video lighting doesn't do the colour much justice. take a better look at the guitar. Let's take a look at the other things that came with it. The guitar comes with an optional sticky back scratch plate which can be stuck on by just peeling off the white film. The other side has a clear protective plastic coating that can be peeled off to reveal a nice shiny black surface. I think it before attempting to stick it on the guitar you really need to just lay it on top of the guitar a few times so you know where you're going to lay it down before peeling off the protection for the sticky backing. Another thing that came with the guitar is a lightweight bag with a small pocket in the front so you can keep your photocopies or bits and pieces that you use with the guitar. The bag is very lightweight with no padding so it wouldn't protect your guitar from any major knocks. However, it would keep away minor scratches and stuff. I certainly wouldn't recommend this bag as a long-term solution, as I don't think it'll last very long. Saying that, I've got one student who's been using one like this for a couple of years, but I don't recommend it. Let's see if the guitar will fit in there. It's quite awkward to get the guitar into, but I'd imagine that's because it's new 
and it needs to be stretched out a bit. It's been flattened in the box for I don't know how long. And I'd be quite careful with the zips because I think they'd break quite easily. There you go, it fits in quite nicely and it does offer some protection to your guitar. Right, let's have a look at all the individual components on the guitar one by one. Firstly, if we look at the bridge and the tailpiece, it's actually very nice. The wood with the grain is quite nice. The uh, bridge is a standard plastic one. It's quite high, but it's got plenty of room for adjustment if you're uh, able to do that. The uh, two plastic mother of pearl copy um, dowels are fitting flush, so there's nothing standing out that you can catch your fingers on or anything. So it's not bad. Looking at the nut, this is just another standard plastic component. However, it's fitted reasonably well, and the action at the first fret is actually surprisingly good. So again, I can't really criticise this. Right, before I look at the machine heads or the tuners, I'll put a support under the neck so I can turn them without uh, twisting the guitar around. I'm very surprised. The machine heads are actually very good. They're sealed, uh, which I wasn't expecting. On a guitar of this price, you don't expect machine heads of this quality. Admittedly, they're not the best in the world, but what do you expect? They are far better than I expected. You'll notice the white discs on the back of the machine heads. These are just protective film that are there to protect the machine heads during shipping. So I'll peel these off now and theoretically they should reveal nice shiny chrome. Once you've got the protective film off the machine heads, they look really nice. Let's take a look at probably the most important thing, and that's the neck and the playability. The frets seem reasonably level, however the size of the frets aren't finished very well. But this is normal on a cheap guitar, this is why I knew to check this first. You can correct this if you know what you're doing, or if you have a friend who knows what he's doing, it's not that hard. Saying that, the neck still feels very playable. The action, which is the height of the strings, as you go up the neck towards the bridge, gets a little bit higher, but perfectly playable, and in fact I know people who prefer it at this sort of height. Something I'm really surprised by, and that is the accuracy of the intonation. And what that is, is the tuning up the neck of the guitar. I've seen guitars that have cost five times more than this guitar, literally, and the intonation's been quite poor. On this particular guitar, on most strings, the intonation is pretty much bang on. On the bottom E string, it's a tiny bit out, but this is quite common. Considering what you're paying for this guitar, it is excellent value. Here's some tests of various types of music, just so you can get an idea what it sounds like. I've recorded these tests straight through the camera microphone, so the sound quality isn't brilliant, but I thought that was more honest than taking it through my processors. This is the first review I've ever done of an acoustic guitar, and really I'm not geared up for it. First, a basic scale. Classical style finger picking.
drumming style. Folk style finger picking. country and western style strumming. This next test is very unscientific, so make of it what you will. The darker guitar is my own guitar, and it's pretty much exactly the same size and shape as the Glowry. However, my guitar cost over £200 and it's got expensive strings on it. The strings are older, and obviously the Glowry strings are brand new. This does make a difference, as older strings change tone. The microphone is just the microphone off the top of my video camera. Again, it's just to give it an honest chance. So, here it is, comparing the two guitars. I don't think there's very much in it, to me, be quite honest with you. £200. <laughs> Forty pounds. Two hundred pounds. Forty pounds. In conclusion then, it's a good playable instrument, and it would make someone a great first guitar, a good guitar to learn on. Or for somebody who can already play the guitar and has got one, it would make a good second guitar for taking out, going to the beach and parties and stuff. Because this guitar is so inexpensive, you wouldn't feel so insecure taking it to places where it could potentially get damaged. The finish on the guitar isn't brilliant, there's places where you can see that they've sanded down the finish and not done a very good job and uh, the lacquer hasn't quite gone to the edges and there's bits of glue coming out and silly things like this. However, it gives it a kind of a homemade feel and it doesn't affect the playability. If you're interested in buying one of these guitars, I'll leave the link to their website down below in the description. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, or you'd like to see some tutorial videos, then please subscribe to my channel and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching. <laughs>